All right, there we go. So let me start by introducing myself. So my name is uh, Michael Holmberg. I do come from Extreme Networks. And uh, my talk is about automation. So I think, you know, Antti from CSC kind of had a, a pretty go good presentation around the, the automation journey they actually went through. So I'm basically going to continue on that path. So kind of give you a view of automation from our point of view. And, and as I said, I come from Extreme Network, so I think, you know, as the heading for my slide is, is cross-domain. So we truly believe that automation is a journey. You know, you start somewhere and then you kind of build the automation uh, deployment, all that stuff further on. So with that said, this is kind of, of, you know, the journey I'm going to take you through. So intent being that, that as I said, you start from something which basically means that you probably start from, from automating your infrastructure. So basically building your network right. And then the next phase is that you go into to more automation from the point of view of, of you know, add services, automate the services, start to, to put in tenants to your network, all that stuff. And eventually you get all the, the way to the left, uh, right hand side with cross domain automation. And this being, closed loop cross domain automation. So what does that mean? It basically means that it's cross domain, saying that you don't only automate the network, the infrastructure itself, but you also automate kind of applications, events. So, you know, if you guys are, are familiar with the, the IFTTT, if this, then that, that's basically the cross domain automation, which would allow you to basically then, you know, if something happens in your network, I might want to send a you know, chat message like Slack to my NOC team, notify them of something happening in my network. At the same time, I might actually want to open a, a travel ticket in Jira. So basically, have an application responding to that given event. So this is event-driven automation I'm going to talk about. Where should I point this? All right, so kind of taking a step back here. So I'm going to bore you like two minutes with this slide. This, this kind of just gives you an understanding on how we see this automation journey from a, a switch vendor point of view, saying that we have something called the insight architecture, which on a truly high level means that we have a VM on the switch itself, which would allow you to deploy applications, deploy different things on the switch itself. So from a automation point of view, you know, why I start from this one is once again going back to the infrastructure automation as the first step. So going back to the second slide, the journey of, of, of the automation. So say that you want to build a, a claw architecture, a spine leaf architecture, a kind of typical DC architecture, right? What you'll have is your leaf switch, your spine switch. What you're going to do is obviously connect them together in some way physical cables, then you're going to put your management network, connect your management network, and then you basically are going to start to configure each and every of these devices. So you know, kind of what I guess the majority of us are used to doing, jump on CLI or something similar, start to configure the network, do your IP underlay, your overlays, everything. So a pretty complex configuration at the end of the day. Now, going back to the first slide saying that, you know, the automation journey starts here. So what if you actually have an application running off one of the spine switches saying that with a single command, I'm actually going to build up my complete infrastructure, which basically shows you that in like less than a minute, I did my IP underlay and my overlay and I basically could provision my tenants into the network as well. So why am, I, why am I showing you this? It's just because, as said, this is a journey. This is where you start, but this is just the infrastructure. This is just the plumbing, right? Now becomes the question that, what's next? Okay, I have my network built, but now I want to start to actually add stuff onto that one, or I want to start to do, you know, closed loop cross-domain automation. So, many of you might find yourself on this picture. What you'll do is, you know, 
you have a monitors in front of you. This is your every day more or less. And you hope that you don't get the you know, one o'clock a.m. one one uh, one a.m. clock in the morning uh, call in the morning of something being wrong in your network. And once and if you get that call, what happens? You are going to fix the problem, right? So you might actually end up being something like this. You might have scripts that you actually do some stuff with, right? To fix problems or you know provision new things, orchestrate things. So it's still pretty much manual labor based on something. Now, going to the thing I was saying, event-driven. So what if, instead of getting that you know, 1 a.m. call, what if you actually, as I already gave the example of that one, what if you have a mechanism in place that would try to remediate the problem? So let's take a, a simple problem being like, you know, a port goes down. So what if you actually have once again, the IFTTT, if this, then that. A port going down, and I would have some kind of an, that's an event. I would have an action based on that that would try to remediate my problem, try to restart the port. It would also actually enable an application, being, as said, a Slack message, a chat message on a knock channel, which basically would post your knock a message saying that the port went down. At the same time, you might actually have an application being, you know, Jira, for instance, where you would open up a trouble ticket. So all of this you can see is kind of cross-domain due to the fact that you do multiple things here. Now, kind of to put this into some context, let me get the build up, sorry. So I'm going to, to kind of spend the rest of this presentation talking about Stackstorm. How many of you guys have heard of Stack Store? One, two, okay. So this is truly around Stack Store, which is an, an you know event-driven automation platform, which is pretty much uh, workflow-driven. So why am I kind of being from Stream Networks talking about Stack Store? Well, the fact being is that we do have a product called the Extreme Workflow Composer that is based on Stack Store engine. And that's completely open source. So you guys can go and, and pick you know, the Stackstorm application and start to use it. The key difference being if it's Stackstorm, it's truly a DevOps tool, which means that you probably are pretty familiar with, with you know, scripting all that stuff because you do basically everything in scripts. While on the wor Extreme Workflow Composer, it's, it's pretty nice GUI. You, know, you have a, a graphical user interface called the workflow designer that would actually design those workflows for you. Now, Here's the key message from you know, these 20 minutes of fame for me here talking to you guys is that Stackstorm is three components. Try to remember these. On the left-hand side, you have a sensor. What is a sensor? It's basically something you know, that fetch something. So a simple example of a, a, a sensor could be an SNMP trap, a syslog message, something like that. This is just pretty much simplified. Then you have a rule, a workflow. So basically an action, something defining something. It could be a you know, Perl script, Python script, you name it, anything, legacy CLI, whatever basically. And then on the right hand side you have the action. The action could be kind of going back to my example, saying that if I have a port going down, what would the action be? One action would be remediation, trying to actually restart the port. Second action would actually be to talk to Jira, open a trouble ticket. And the third action would actually be to send a Slack or, or post a Slack message on that one. So now you kind of start to see the picture building up here on the cross domain. And then you can add on the closed loop. So you can have truly different workflows defined for doing different things. It's basically up to you how you want to do this and define this. It's, it's completely you know, flexible for, for anything you want to do, basically. So I said, key message being is, is remember these three components within Stackstorm, within this you know, automation suite. So let's kind of look at this one. So on the right-hand side, you basically have those three actions, right? So if you now, now start to put this into some context, 
what you have is on the left hand side is basically the workflow designer. So it's kind of, as you can see, it's, it's box driven. So if we start to look at this, so obviously first you have kind of, I guess we are missing something from the slide, it's kind of cutting off there. So what you'll have is, is your input. And the input in, in, in this case could be like, you know, a, a Cassandra replace host. Cassandra is a DB management application basically, so it's a cluster. So what this kind of shows you is you, you have an input. That's your sensor. Then you have your output, which is basically an action. What's going to happen? If I have a Cassandra node going down, what am I going to do? I might want to replace it, spin up a new VM, or something else. You name it, right? So you have your action. And then, obviously, something you need to have is your workflow. So as you can see, it's a task. Now, within the task, you can actually have on success or on error. Saying that if I have this workflow going through here, as you can see the green arrows kind of represents that it's on success. Now say that, you know, it's a Cassandra node. If I just do a poll, I check everything is okay. On success, I'm going to just send a Slack message saying everything is okay. But as you can see on the right hand side with the, re uh, the red arrows on error, what's going to happen? I'm going to basically, you know, try to remediate the problem and post a Slack message. So I'm going to basically spin up a new VM kind of being part of this cluster. So this is kind of how you work on this one. Everything is kind of boxed. It's a box that's your workflow. You define what you want to have in the workflow. It could be an application, it could be a script, it could be a CLI command, it could be basically anything. It's completely open. So this is just, you know, side by side, the workflow and then your script. So fact being is that once you start to work with scripts, huge scripts, say that, you know, six months from now you come back and you start to look at your script and you're like, like yeah, sure, what was, that, what was I thinking about when I did that one? It's like 100 lines or something like that. I guess it's not that trivial to actually find out what you have in your script. Hence, if you can actually, as said, pick a part of that script that's going to be boxed and you only work in that box. That's kind of the clue here that, that you know, how you work on, on, on this given tool. You can have, let me get the build up here. So you can have like, like linear workflows, parallel, semi-parallel. Linear is pretty straightforward, right? If this, then that, this is how you're going to go on that one. If you go to into parallel, Say that, for instance, to give you an example, you want to spin up like 10 different VMs, all with different logics. This is probably what you're going to do. And then the last one is semi-parallel, so at the end you might actually merge them together, do a join on that one. That's basically the idea on these ones. So the next slide is, is basically just showing you the joins, so you can see you basically have two Cassandra nodes that you would then have as load balancing nodes and you would join then eventually and close the request. So as said, it's up to you how you want to do these things. So my intent of this presentation is not for you guys to understand all the complexity of the scripting itself. This is kind of just giving you an overview of how this automation can take place or how you could do these automation things with this given tool. So, yeah, let's skip that one. So, as I was pointing out, if you look at this slide, what you can see is one of the boxes, the gray one, that's where you actually highlight a given part of your workflow. And that would then show up within your script as highlighted, which means that I can now pick that given part of the script and work on only that one. And then, you know, commit the changes, whatever you did, and then you have it part of a workflow. So, as said, this is a, you know, truly open source product. There's something called the exchange at Stackstorm, which basically means that you have integrations with multiple different applications. I think it's like 
250 plus today. And as you can see, starting from the left hand side with the cloud providers, you go into automation, essentials, curiosities, you even have a Tesla car, you have Nest, you have Hue, you have IoT stuff, you name it. But the intent of this one is to show you that, that you know, if you remember those three components, the sensor workflow and action. So this could be an action, right? You have an integration with an application. As I already been kind of stating over and over again that a couple of applications for that Jira, Slack, things like that. You have Excel, so I'm going to show you or walk you through a, a example of Excel actually used for that one as well. But as I said, think of this on a high level, don't get into the details. I just want to kind of convey to you a, a overall view of, of the automation and the automation as a journey that starts with basic infrastructure automation going all the way to cross domain automation as I have been laying out my examples here. This is just how you install the packs. I guess you guys get these slides, so, so I don't cover this one in, in the presentation. Uh, what I want to do is, is kind of spend a minute on this one. So what you see is here is where you actually go and, and pick the pack you want to use. Remember the slide with all the packs. You pick your Excel and then you basically install it and then you can start to use Excel with column definitions. So basically what you're going to do is, is create something like this where I can use an Excel spreadsheet to basically import my device information, BGP information, port information, lag information, you name it but I can still use that as the underlay for my automation. So yeah, this is a couple of examples how you then would create that one. Let me skip through these ones. And kind of putting this into some context here, what you see here is, is you know, say that, that I have a slow application in my network. Somebody is going to basically, you know, call me up saying uh, my application is slow. How can I use that this one for, for basically, you know, doing something to that one. Well, I can kind of automate everything I told you so far based on, for instance, having, if you have inside architecture, you have a VM running on a switch, you could have a Wireshark capture happening once you have slowness in that one. You could, as said, try to remediate the problem, add a lag group, more bandwidth, you could, you know, open a trouble ticket, you could post a Slack message, you could, as said, enable a Wireshark packet capture and put that as an attachment to your, your Jira trouble ticket, so on and so forth. I'm, I'm kind of flying pretty high here, but I just want to put this into some context for you. So with that said, I think, you know, let's go into a, a more kind of realistic uh, short video of this one. So what this video is going to show you is more or less, as I already kind of been saying here, that you're going to have a port going down, then you are going to actually try to remediate that problem. You're going to have web hooks into applications, which is going to post a Slack message, and then it's going to eventually post a Jira trouble ticket at the same time. All with the given event being a port going down without any human intervention, intervention just kind of, of, as said, cross-domain automation being the thing here. So can we get the video to roll? Can you? It should be a video. Can we get some more volume? Thank you. 
opportunity and we pay them. So now if we want to piggyback back with that folks, looks like we have an automation platform. The first place we need to go is uh, in the workflow composer and use the limit case and look at the rules tab. But the one we're interested in is right there at the bottom. Now, workflow composer is an event-driven automation platform. We can see the business and the analysis that's involved with this particular rule. Um, if that workflow is true, then we can see what action workflow composer wants to take. In this case, it's going to initiate a link flap uh, remediation workflow. Now, if we want to see the actual workflow that it's going to be initiating, we need to go to the actions tab. And if we scroll down here, it's called the link flap remediation workflow. Now, if we want to see the details of that workflow, we just click on the edit tab. And that takes us to the workflow design UI. In this case, we were going to show how an issue was going to come up, that Splunk was going to uh, send an alert, that alert was going to trigger a workflow, and that workflow would then notify the on-site staff that something is happening. It would attempt to fix that issue, and then finally uh, post a ticket into the JIRA ticketing system. The beauty of this workflow design UI is you can lay out workflows graphically and then it automatically creates the code. Okay, so for all intents and purposes, that's all the components in the environment of this demonstration. And now we're ready to actually initiate the demonstration. And so what we're looking at now is the Splunk interface with the alert that came in after I shut that interface down. We have the string here that we're filtering on, the NSM1003. And we can also see all the payload information that is included in the alert. And this is the information that is sent as a payload via the webhook to our automation platform. So if you recall, the first thing that was happening in our workflow was that our automation platform was going to uh, send a message to Slack to notify the on-site staff that something was happening, that a link in this case went down. And we can see that information listed down here on the bottom. The next thing that was going to happen was that we were going to capture the interface information and be able to provide that to the on-site support staff. From there, the workflow was going to attempt to bring that interface back up and running. Now the next message shows that um, that attempt to bring that interface back up and running has been successful. Now the last step of the workflow was to create a ticket inside of Jira. We can see the ticket's been created. We can see when it was created. We can also see, again, all that interface information and that it was created just now. And then if we drill in to look at the details of the ticket, we can see all the steps that were taken um, and all the details of each one of those steps. Okay, that concludes the presentation. Any questions, thoughts? Did you understand anything? <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, I did. Anyway, thank you very much, Michael.